I'm training to run a sub 48 second 400, and in this series, I document all of my workouts and bring you guys along on the journey so you can see exactly how I progress over time, modify my workouts throughout the year, and hopefully break 48 seconds in the 400. In this episode, I do speed training, acceleration work, lactate training, lifting, and more. I started out the week with max speed work. I did a general warm up to increase my core body temperature and get everything moving, and then transitioned to dynamic stretches to loosen up my muscles. After that, I moved into some form drills, focusing on striking the ground directly underneath myself and keeping my pelvis in the correct position. I finished with my favorite form drill, dribbles, progressing from ankle to shin to knee dribbles. These are better than anything I've ever seen at teaching correct top speed mechanics. Then I jumped into some 10 meter flies with 30 meter buildups. After that, I went to the gym and got a lift in. I was short on time, so all I did was an active lunge isometric, focusing on pulling my front foot backward with my hamstring. I did these weighted for the first time this year, and I definitely felt the burn. It's Tuesday, September 10th, and today I have 200s, and I have not done hard, fast 200s in quite a while. So it's very up in the air how this is gonna go, but obviously I'm gonna give it my best shot. The goal is gonna be to get three below 26.5 and then I'm gonna take like a 10 minute break and then try to do two more both below 26.5 and I'm gonna be resting two minutes. I'm gonna do rolling starts because the idea is to maintain pace through the whole 200, not accelerate really hard at the start and then cruise to the end. And basically I'll be aiming for aggressive but relaxed. I don't have anyone here to record so you guys are probably gonna have pretty bad views of the reps but I'll tell you what times I get. I'm gonna use a timing gate so the timing will be really accurate. The timing app I use is called Photo Finish Automatic Timing. I absolutely love it, and if you're interested, you can find the link in the description. Off to a rough start, off pace already. Well, what can you do? Some days are just bad days. I think it's probably because yesterday I peaked in my 10 meter flies and then I did one more and was a little slower and then I did one more and was a lot slower. So essentially I cooked my nervous system, which is always best practice when you're training to be a sprinter. And then also I did those isometrics with weight, which I haven't done before. So all together, just kind of cooked me out a little bit. I didn't have very much energy or power or twitchiness or anything today. So a disappointing workout, but hey, first time doing 200s in quite a while. Pretty big day yesterday, so it is what it is. I finished off the day with some extensive pogo hops to get in a little bit more plyometric volume and stimulate my Achilles tendons. The next day, I had an acceleration day. In the future, I'm gonna be tracking all my acceleration reps to monitor my improvement over time, but for this workout, I was just trying to focus on technique and being powerful. I was focusing on trying to push off of both legs during the initial push. You can see that it causes my back heel to rock backward as I load it, which is inefficient. Having blocks would help with that because it'd be something to put my heel against, and also just focusing on maintaining ankle stiffness through the push. Unfortunately, I don't have any blocks right now, but I hope to buy some soon in the next couple of months. I also want to get some form of resistance for acceleration because my acceleration is by far the weakest link of my sprint performance. Good acceleration is necessary for competitive success in all the sprint events and also is necessary to reach your top speed. So the better your acceleration gets, in my opinion, the more effective your max velocity training will get and the more adaptations that training will provide. I also have this really weird bad habit of pushing off the ground with my arms, possibly because I'm not strong enough to push out at the shin angles that I'm aiming for. I do start attempting higher shin angles and finding some success there in the coming weeks, but it isn't until after this video was recorded. After the track work, I went in for a strength-focused lift. 
The first exercise was deadlift, and it frustrated me quite a bit. I used to be able to deadlift about 405 pounds, but that was on a bar with a raised handle. I am by far the weakest at the bottom of the range of motion, so those few extra inches of depth really took down the numbers I could lift. It's probably beneficial in the long term to gain strength through that range, especially at this time of year, so I'll just have to accept the ego hit. And that frustration is why I did so many reps in the last set. I took Friday off and came back Saturday for one more lift, this time going back to the weighted isometric holds. I added some seated calf work in, which I really enjoyed. The only issue is, these pads are super hard, and so when you start adding a lot of weight, it is really uncomfortable and kind of crushes your quads, so that's why I ended up doing these kind of light. All in all, I thought this was a pretty decent week of training. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.